now. So that is us. Um, that is us recording the session now. Um, and yeah, so uh, again, for those that have just joined us, welcome to the session. This is um, the fifth in the webinar series that we've been running since the end of April. So we're focusing on reaching and engaging your audience. We have run a session such as behaviour change, running online events and um, using apps um, using apps to collect carbon data. So it's been a variety of different sessions and those recordings will be made available um, fairly soon. We'll pop them up on to, the, as Tim mentioned earlier, um, on our var various social media channels and onto our website. So do look out for those recordings um, coming up and this will be this will be an hour long session which um tim will take you through cool thanks very much claire um so yeah session today is on reaching and engaging um your audience and an outline of a webinar um so what are we doing today well over the past year covid 19 has changed the way many of us communicate um, and engage both within our communities and more widely um and we're looking at with an ever-changing world how we can best change how we can best plan our climate change and sustainability engagement for the future so we're going to learn a variety of practical methods to reach and engage your audience and the webinar today is also going to feature time for discussion and questions and sharing of challenges and good practice so please do um, in the chat box introduce yourself to other people if you'd like to and what your project's doing how people can get involved um, and do get involved in the interactive bits as we go along in the webinar. Um, there'll be plenty of times for questions um, at the end. So again, do type your questions in the chat. Claire will pick those up. And if they're not covered um, in the first part of the webinar, we'll cover them in the q and I I think um, just to say it's recognition that it's been an extremely challenging um, and sad time for many people during COVID-19. Absolutely massive, massive challenges. Um, we hope that um, if we can bring something positive um, out of this, um, it will be an extremely good thing. I mean, there are positive things happening now with a green recovery from COVID-19 and stuff. And hopefully this webinar will show you various ways to communicate positive things that we can do in the future to build, um, hopefully, um, a better planet, which is better for um, our ecosystems and better for people as well. So the agenda today. We'll have an introduction um, first to um, who we are at the Climate Challenge Fund that keeps not beautiful. We'll cover some challenges. Then we'll look at some successful approaches to communication. We'll look at planning for the future. And then we'll have a summary of what we've learned during the session, a couple of contact details, and then we'll be on to our Q&A session. And so that's kind of our agenda for today. And we'll follow that um, throughout the session. So our introduction. So Keep Scotland Beautiful, who are we? Well, we work to help combat climate change, reduce litter and waste, and to protect and enhance the places we care for. Um, and as you'll see from a graphic on the right hand side, we support the ambitions of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. About the Climate Challenge Fund, what is the fund? Well, it's there to empower community led action on climate change in Scotland. Um, the Scottish Government's Climate Challenge Fund was launched in 2008. Over a thousand projects across all 32 local authorities have been awarded CCF grants, with total funding exceeding 111 million. Um, if you're not from a CCF grant recipient um, here, what's it do? Well, the CCF supports community-led organisations in Scotland to tackle climate change. They do this by running projects that reduce local carbon emissions. What have previously funded projects done? Well, they've worked in a variety of areas. They've helped communities reduce their reliance on car travel, they've cut waste, they've helped people grow and consume local food, and they've reduced energy use in homes and community buildings. You can find out more about um, the Climate Challenge Fund through that web link just at the bottom of the page. Our image there is of the community fridge um, at the Gate Church Carbon Saving Project in Dundee. So training and support. Um, the Climate Challenge Fund isn't just about grants. Um, we've been delighted at Keep Scotland Beautiful to manage the CCF on behalf of the Scottish Government um, since the fund began in 2008. And we have staff that support applicants and also those grantees who are awarded grants. Um, 
This webinar is part of the free training and support that we offer communities across Scotland to build their capacity to tackle climate change. Um, as you would be very aware, if you're a grant recipient, all of the support's been delivered online during COVID-19. And again, you can find out more about this um, and the other webinars in our series at keepscotlandbeautiful.org.ccf. There's just been a new webinar added, um, which is about bringing the Climate Change Conference in Glasgow to your community. Um, so I do advise you to check that one out. We've still got a few spaces left. So challenges. Um, as I mentioned before, COVID-19 has been a massively challenging and um, sad time for, 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 for all of us, I think. Um, it's been extremely difficult. Um, it's not just had the obvious challenges on people's health and things. Um, it's also impacted communities at various different levels. Um, if it's okay now, I'd like to draw you onto a slide um, where we'll be talking about how COVID-19 has impacted your events. Um, I'd be very grateful if you could share your experience here and help us build up a picture. Um, so number one, the question um, we'd like to, to answer is, have your events been impacted by COVID-19? These are your physical events, these things you do like swap shots, um, things like um, your lead bike rides, things like energy efficiency um, advice um, sessions, stuff like that. So in the chat box, please, um, on a scale of one to five, one is least and five is most. If you could share how much your events have been impacted, that would be great. Claire will kind of pick up those um, figures as we're going um, and we'll just kind of have a bit of a chat about those. We've got some fives uh, coming in here, Tim. Okay. Yep, more fives. Seem, yeah, it seems everybody's okay. on that same page. Um, thank you very much, Claire. Um, so yeah, it does appear that we've had um, a really, really um, big impact on people's physical events by COVID-19, which isn't surprising at all due to the lockdown restrictions we've got on things. Number two, what I'd really like you to share now is, could you share some of the challenges that you faced? Um, please, can you just share one challenge? So please share your biggest challenge um, with events. Again, type those in the chat box and Claire will pick them up for us. think whilst um oh here we go we've got some coming in uh so we've got things like uh trustees safety encouraging people to sign up to zoom workshops engaging with uh, the community reaching new people trying to maintain a sense of community when you can't have people physically in a space together uh getting people to attend online events when it is that kind of market so saturated uh, and yeah, uh, we've got here in one we are definitely facing people booking and not turning up to online events. Um, we do do face that that a lot. Uh, reaching people who are not online, and yeah, not everyone has access to online events, so some some really big challenges there. Cool. Um, yeah, I agree totally. Um, thanks ever so much, everyone, for sharing that. Um, we will be covering almost all of those points throughout the webinar. Um, hopefully some ways in which we can um, address some of those challenges. Um, so do kind of keep tuned for those. If there's anything we don't pick up as we go along, again, type it in the text box um, if you don't feel it's been covered and we'll cover it in the Q&A just at the end of a webinar session. So I've got another thing where it'll be amazing if you could um, share your experiences now. So we're not talking about events so much now, we're talking about the actual communications that you might put out to your community. So things you might put out on your website, something you might put out in a newsletter um, or via social media. So if you could share your experience and firstly, um, have your communications um, in those ways, have they been impacted? Again, on the scale, number one is least impacted. It didn't make a difference. Number five is most impacted. Some fours, twos and threes coming through, Tim. OK, so it seems like um, events are the most impacted and um, communications actually going out. Um, obviously, because lots of those will be digital, perhaps, um, seem to be less impacted. Um, if um, for our second question, what challenges do you face again? Please just um, if you could share your number one biggest challenge um, in your communications um, with people during COVID-19. It's sometimes worth thinking about your communications, your outbound stuff. You might also do face-to-face -face stuff normally as well. So you might actually chap on doors normally, 
you might meet with people and communicate that way as well. They're not specific events, but um, they might be in fact as well. So um, having a think about your biggest challenge, um, if you um, could type that in the chat box and again, um, Claire will pick it up. So I've got some coming through here, Tim. Um, so again, uh, similar to the, the events part is trying to reach people who aren't online, um, you know, getting, at, getting remote access and yeah, en engagement with the target community as well. So kind of some similar challenges to, to when you're actually running events too. Cool. Um, thank you ever so much for people for sharing that. Um, yeah, I definitely think that um, it seems to be a common thing coming through of reaching people who aren't online. Um, and we will kind of um, talk about that point a bit more later. So thank you for sharing that. So successful approaches. Um, so in the last year, we've seen a variety of different successful approaches um, from CCF projects and from community organisations across Scotland um, in doing events differently and communicating. Um, again, if I could just ask people to share your experience, how have you done things differently with your events? So please share one thing with doing your events differently that's worked really, really well. Um, put it in the chat box. Um, hopefully we'll um, kind of all learn some new experience from this. We had some other challenges um, coming up there when you were talking through things, Tim. So just whilst we're waiting for people to pop in the chat box there about their experience, um, you know, things like social media algorithms, that is quite complicated, actually. And much of the communication for some people's project is through leaflets and word of, word of mouth. Oh, so great, some good things coming in here for how have you done things differently? Um, so using, um, you know, Zoom webinars um, instead of home energy surveys, fortnightly Zoom talks about variety of energy related matters. Um, there's also a couple of events where posted, sent out posted packs to people for them to complete at home. And it meant people from much further away could participate and it could be done in their own time rather than a specific event time. Fantastic, thank you. So do keep sharing this type of stuff. Um, it's often that kind of networking and stuff for, from people who are actually doing stuff physically and finding things that are working that um, we can all learn from and things. So if something's shared, something that um, we're talking about has worked particularly well that you know about, that you've done, do share it in the chat box away for it. Might inspire others to do the same thing. Um, we've got lots of um, examples of CCF projects who've done something really well, like the film club at Aranika Savvy. And that's really spread across um, lots of the different CCF projects across Scotland. So sharing this kind of experience you guys have developed really does work in inspiring others to take effective action. Um, thanks very much for sharing that stuff. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a, some look of what um, CCF projects have done um, over the past year to adapting and providing um, online support by doing events differently. So what have they done? Um, so we've had online activities, including a variety of webinars. Um, and you might think of doing um, a variety of different types of webinars. So you could have one-to-one -one tutorials. You could do recorded video webinars. You could do live film showings. And you could do discussion sessions. We've got some examples of these just um, featured below, um, which we'll bring up now. So first one, um, regular workshops via webinars. So if you wanted to run a regular series of workshops by webinars, these seem to work pretty well. People know you'll be in the same time, same place um, on the same platform, and they can sign up confidently knowing that there'll be something going on every Tuesday at three o'clock, for example. So Regards were great in this. They offered sustainable fashion tips and skills through their fixing fashion project, and they ran that via Zoom. The next one we're going to talk about is one-to-one -one advice. So that's something quite different, I think, from running a, a regular workshop or a webinar. This is something where someone can dial you up and actually ask for one-to-one -one advice on something. So Remode, um, these guys offered clothing repair support on a one-to-one -one basis via Zoom. So if you were struggling with a particular type of um, clothing repair problem, um, you could um, call them up, make an appointment, um, and then chat through it um, live on Zoom and hopefully um, get your project underway again. So I think that's a really good um, way, to, way to have advice as well. 
There's been other things that people have used um, social media um, and online activities for really effectively. Um, and this is updates and demonstrations. So FURSA Grows and Transit Marys, both of these CCF projects had offered really good planting and growing advice via Facebook. Um, so it's there and lots and lots of people have access to Facebook. So they post their updates to Facebook. Um, Trons St Mary's ones seem to be recorded almost live, um, which is great. Um, I had some really good advice on planting and growing. The next one we've got here, as I touched on it earlier, is um, film showings. Um, these can be extremely popular, not only because people want to come along um, and see a film, um, they want something to do, um, also in stimulating discussion about climate change afterwards. So you could actually include a discussion session on climate change after your film showing. Aaron and Kusabi were absolutely amazing at doing this tremendously well. They offered a whole series of film showings on different environmental and climate change subjects throughout the life of their project um, via Facebook. Um, and if you look on their website, um, a lot of these films are still available to view. Um, Aaron and Kusabi were also really good at supporting others in the CCF community to set up their own film showings. Um, so we've seen those springing up across different projects. Um, so really, really good work there, successful work. The other way of doing it, events differently we've found has worked very well is discussion and networking. So you actually hold um, a webinar, um, but it's not a kind of delivery session um, where you're um, kind of showing lots of information, a show and tell almost. It's set up so people can actually discuss something where they can network, where they can learn more from participants. The Salisbury Centre did this um, well via Zoom. Um, and kind of throwing it open to everyone else now. Has there been anything else here which people think, yeah, that would be really good, we'd like to run a session like that? Or anything people have gone like, actually, we've run something like that, it's worked really well. So give us some examples in the chat again as we're going. So our next section is about adapting our communications. We talked earlier about the challenges to communicating um, during COVID-19. So we'd like to get some really good experience from, from you all of how you've done things differently. So please share one example of adapting your communications that's worked really, really well again. So we've got anything wait, just waiting on. for some things yeah. to come through there, Tim. Go. Cool. But no, people have been mentioning just as you were going on in the previous bit about um, our Nico Savi being very, very helpful in, in the film aspect, and film's been a, a great way of, of engaging with communities. Um, and agree, I think it's a, it's a great way of kind of reaching your community, having something to bring people together, and then have a discussion um, afterwards. OK, so here's some things uh, coming through now. So uh, speaker events working really well, drew in an audience from all around the world. Brilliant. So uh, this example, an online seed gathering with a new speaker session each night. So that sounds really good. Fantastic. Um, offering energy advice over the phone, Zoom, WhatsApp, rather than visiting homes as well. Fantastic. So it sounds like um lots lots of um people attending a webinar today you're doing these things already um and thanks for sharing the examples again someone might hear one of these examples today and go you know what that's what we need to do for our project so please do keep sharing those that's fantastic thank you so our next slide um we're going to just share some examples of successful communication um that have happened over the last year where ccf projects have shared relevant and positive communications so We've got activities tackling climate change and COVID-19. Um, so Bike for Good um, were very good at sharing their activities, but they were um, having bikes um, available for key workers. Um, so key workers could actually come and get um, a bike for free and uh, panniers and stuff and the other things they needed to get to their work safely and in a social distanced way. And they also offered free route planning as well. So they could, um, give these key workers the most effective and safest route to get to their job. There's also been some really good examples of CCF projects sharing really positive news um, about upcycling equipment um, for the NHS. 
Um, there's some really, really good examples like Transition Sterling, we're using their 3D printer to make um, face masks and things. And there were other um, CCF projects which were crafting stuff um, and providing those like um, for scrubs and things and also for face masks, making them out of materials. Um, all of this stuff, um, you know, really positive stories and it being really helpful as well. So if you can um, share your communications, make sure they're positive and show the good work that they're doing. I think that's um, you're onto a really good thing there. Um, the next point we've got um, is activities that are supporting the local community and tackling climate change um, during COVID-19 as well. And I think um, even with projects that were continuing, albeit in a slightly different manner, um, there's some really good examples there we can learn from. So Gate Church Carbon Saving Projects for a community fridge, that continued. Um, obviously there was um, social distancing and things which had to be enforced and stuff, but the project continued um, and there was some really good messaging coming out um, around Christmas and things about the amount of um, surplus food that was coming to the fridge from supermarkets and things and that people would come and get that food. It not only um, helps to tackle climate change through reducing um, food waste, but it also provides this food for free um, for people um, who need it. I think the third point we've got here, and I keep on saying the word positive, is sharing positive news stories. Um, that's worked really well. Um, have a think about positive things um, that you could share um, on your channels and stuff. Um, I mean, could improvements in air quality um, during lockdown be permanent with more home working? Um, could increased active travel and better public transport post COVID um, lead to better air quality as well and better health and things? Um, it's getting some of those stories out there. We've seen some really good positive posts on social media about this type of stuff. And people saying that, look, I can hear the birds singing outside because um, the amount of uh, noise from um, big traffic's decreased and stuff. Imagine if these things became more permanent, we could move towards active travel, more homeworking and stuff, and we could hear these birds singing all the time and some things. I think people have become more connected to nature and, and stuff during the COVID pandemic. They've really valued the local areas as well. And we'll be touching on some of those points a bit more later. The final point I'd like to share on this slide is um, promoting things people can actually do. Now, this has been successful during COVID-19. Um, sadly, lots of people have been furloughed or sadly even lost their jobs. Um, and we've all been spending much more time at home in the house. So sharing things people can practically do um, from their home has worked really well in the last year. Um, so sharing online courses accessible from home um, have worked really well. And we covered a few of those courses and things people can do via remote and stuff um, in regards uh, earlier. But again, anything you guys want to share in the chat, please do that. So those are just some examples of successful communications over the last um, year of COVID. So something um, I'd like to share um, is our Climate Heroes um, in 2019-20. This is something we produced at Keeps Gone Beautiful as part of our management of the Climate Challenge Fund. Um, and it really focused on amazing work going on in local areas um, of people who are tackling climate change. And um, this work took place pre-COVID, but I think it's a really good example of kind of positivity and things and positive communications. Um, it also talks about the co-benefits of taking action on climate change. So the action these heroes has taken has not only reduced carbon emissions, but it's also led to some fantastic benefits in the community. So more people have learned to ride bikes, for example, experienced um, local food, they've learned how to repair stuff, all positive things. And the heroes themselves, they've gained stuff from this as well. Um, they've improved um, their skills and experience, they've got qualifications, it's brought them into the community more, um, and some heroes have even um, learnt kind of English from, from scratch through their work um, volunteering at projects. So some amazing stuff going on there. Do check out these heroes um, on our website, keepscottandbeautiful.org slash CCF awards. So the next section we're going to cover is our planning for the future. Obviously, um, we're in an extremely uncertain time at the moment. Um, let's hope that um, things are more positive going forwards, um, but um, the vaccination programme and things means that um, lockdown um, is, is kind of over for now and that um, we do get more and more um, things opening up and stuff and less and less restrictions. Let's hope for that. But 
We also need to be aware that um, there might be some kind of challenges along the way um, if there is a resurgence in COVID and things. So we need to plan for those. So we'll be um, covering what's called a blended approach a bit later um, in this session. But first of all, um, I'd really like to bring you back to some general principles of communicating, um, which is around your message and your ask. So this stuff works um, in pretty much whatever environment you're communicating. And if it's during COVID, if it's not during COVID, and it's super, super important to establish a message and then ask for your project and review it regularly. Um, so in establishing that message and ask, what do you want to include? So your message, please include um, ads number one, include who you are. That's really good to include so people know who you are. Include what you're doing and include where, when, where and why you're doing it. So that stuff will give a really strong message to people to give them the information they need about you. But the second part of this, which it's really important to include is your ask. So you want to tell people how you want them to become involved in your project in their communication. That's a really important thing to do. If you're a CCF funded um, project, please do refer to your application. If you require clarification on what you're doing for your project activities, um, and things, if there's any areas you need to focus on a bit more, perhaps. And remember, just in that second point, um, just um, at the bottom of this blue box, your message and ask may vary according to your audience. So always identify the audience with who you want to communicate with. That's super, super important. So, and some general principles again, um, this is on reaching your audience now. So once you've identified your audience, so who your audience are, where they are and things, um, you need to reach them. So there's a stack of different ways that you might um, consider um, reaching your audience through sharing your content, through sharing your message and your ask. And I've just put a long list of things here. Um, please do type in the chat as um, you come up with any others. There will be lots which aren't on this list. Um, the page just simply isn't big enough. So you might um, reach your audience through websites they um, look at, through social media they access, through online forums, online events. Online influences is a really interesting one. Um, so you'll see in the last few years, the real growth of online influencers, um, people blogging and stuff and vlogging and YouTube and things. So if you can engage with some of these online influencers, you might find you could get your project shared for a much wider audience um, than you would normally. Also through partner organisations, um, you might work with Home Energy Scotland, you might work with Zero Waste Scotland. They will have um, ready-made audiences as well sometimes they can put you in touch with. There's physical events we've spoken about before and public spaces. Um, we've even had um, CCF projects who found it really successful to communicate it in the pub and at sports matches and things at half time. So you've got a ready-made audience there and they've used that audience to communicate their message and their ask. We mentioned online influencers earlier. Um, there's also the marvellous thing of word of mouth and local influencers. If you get your message and ask out to the right person in your community, um, you can pretty much rely on that message being shared very, very widely. And word of mouth is still a super effective way of getting your message and your ask across. Other ways um, of sharing is um, local notice boards, obviously. Um, you might use online notice boards as well um, during COVID and things a bit more or in general. For media and the press, we've obviously got newsletters. Um, just your own newsletter is one way to share things, but think about putting articles in other people's newsletters as well. So once you've got your message and your ask clarified, um, you could draft up different kind of um, portions of text almost. You might have one text which you're ready to send um, to people and say, hey, here's a new story about our project. You might have some cut down text to say, hey, here's our project. This is cut and paste text for your newsletter here. And you might have yet more text, which is for social media, for people saying, hey, here's text about our project, our message and our ask for social media. And it's, it's much, much shorter than as well. So think about getting your message and ask distilled down and ready in templates to send out for these different kind of platforms. One thing we've got at the bottom as well is people were mentioning sending um, stuff out for post and flyers and things. Um, this stuff can work as well. Um, a top tip up here is if you're struggling to reach your audience or even before you're trying to reach them, ask members of that audience how they prefer to communicate. 
think about designing your approach around what works for your audience. I think that's a really key thing to do, that engagement. You might do this informally by just um, calling a couple of people up in your audience saying, look, where do you meet? How do you communicate? How would you like us to share news about our project? You might go back to your CCF application if you're a CCF project and see, okay, um, when we're doing a consultation, people said they communicated via a method X, Y, Z, we'll use those. So it's that type of thing, that consultative approach, which can really, really work well. So if you want further information on your message and your ask, um, we've got a full webinar on increasing participation in your project, which um, ran last year. Um, and that you can find out about a variety of methods to get people involved with your project and how to look after them on their journey in this webinar. It's a full hour and it breaks down um, lots of those different things I included in the list and includes suggestions and top tips there and some case studies from CCF projects as well. So please do check out that webinar if you find more information on that stuff useful. Um, you can find it on the Keep Scotland Beautiful website um, at keepscotlandbeautiful.org stroke CCF branding. Um, you can also navigate there by the CCF website homepage. So some good information um, there. What I'd also like to um, introduce now is the webinar that Claire ran um, just a couple of weeks ago and that was on online running online events. So that's got some really good information on suggestions on running online events via different platforms, some challenges, pitfalls to avoid, and some success stories as well. So we'll be uploading that webinar um, next week um, to the CCF YouTube channel and sharing it via our social media. So do look out for that webinar as well for further information there. So we're gonna look at doing events differently now. Um, this is looking towards the future, um, perhaps where um, we do get more challenges with COVID. Um, hopefully we don't, but we might get more challenges. Um, and it's about um, establishing a blended approach to events. Um, so the way we organise meetings um, and events has changed. Um, when we went through our kind of um, feedback just earlier, people saying, yes, um, it's a really big challenge um, organising meetings, events, so we're finding it really challenging. There's various things and we can do though, and there's various things we do know um, which is going to help inform our new approach. So online development, um, what's the background? So more people are working from home. There are more online meetings and events being um, delivered um, than ever before now. It's great that more people are becoming familiar with online meeting technology. And um, it's great that more people recognise that online meetings cut travel, they cut time, so they're cutting carbon there. You're not having, um, for example, 50, 60 people travelling from all over, perhaps in cars to one thing. They can cut carbon and do it more effectively by having an online meeting, which is great. But um, I think it's, um, as some of the attendees today have um, you've mentioned already, some people can't or won't engage with online communication. So I think it's very, very important um, that we do um, think about um, those people and discuss with them. Um, it's about asking them how they want to communicate and how you can best reach them. It might be that physical events um, they, they will come to, which would be great. So for, for our physical events, challenges we're looking at is with COVID-19 restrictions, um, organising a physical event um, will be quite a dynamic process. Um, you might find that restrictions are kind of um, waxing and waning, um, particularly if you organise an event quite a long way in the future. It's worth bearing in mind with physical events as well, that many people are super enthusiastic about getting and meeting people physically again. They can't wait to get out and about. I think that applies to many of us. But there's also some people um, who aren't so enthusiastic um, about getting out and about just yet. There's people who haven't... Um, been out for quite a while who might be nervous about meeting other people. There's also people um, who have had to shield and things and there's people who are probably waiting for um, both doses of their vaccine before they feel a little bit more confident about meeting for those physical events. So if you're planning a physical event there's lots of things to think about. Think about obviously what you can um, do legally during um, Covid restrictions but also think about the different groups of people you might get at, at attending your event and chat with some of the people who you think might attend your event and see what their concerns are, um, see how you can make that event um, work for everyone. Making works of events work for everyone, um, perhaps a blended approach is the way to go. 
So we might look more towards elements of both physical and online events becoming increasingly necessary in the future. So we covered up just now that um, more people are becoming more confident with online technology. So even if you are holding a physical event, you might want to hold an online element to that event. Um, we've um, run the CCF gathering um, for the last four years. I think it's included a physical event, but it's also included a webinar, a live webinar with that as an online element. Um, this year, um, due to COVID restrictions, we ran the CCF gathering as an entirely online event. Um, both worked well. Um, but I think even if we were going to go back to organising big, big physical events at any point, um, we would still want to keep an online element. And again, a top tip um, with all this type of stuff is please do ask your audience how they prefer to communicate. Design your approach around what works for your audience. Um, if you're not designing your approach around what works for your audience, you may find that you don't get your audience attending those, those events, um, which would um, not be the outcome you were looking for. So um, some top tips now um, on how to actually physically establish a blended approach. Um, we found these things um, particularly valuable um, in working through what we are going to try and do with the CCF gathering and also with some of the events we've been delivering online via webinars. Um, it looked like over gathering um, last year would take place at a physical event for a while, then it wouldn't, then it would, then it wouldn't. So it's something that um, we'd like to share some of that experience just here. So number one, what's our top tip? Scope out um, what physical events and activity you think will work exclusively online or with an online element. So I think that's a really important thing to do. So if COVID restrictions are waxing and waning, you might have a list of events you could run online only, or you might have a list of events um, which would work with a blended approach. Again, um, I don't apologize for saying this again, do ask your audience what approach will work best for them. So they turn up to your events and the events are useful for your audience. The third point there is about auditing your online knowledge and your access to online platforms. It's all very well for your audience um, saying they want to do online stuff, but if we don't know what platform, you still might not reach that audience effectively. So see what um, knowledge you've got across different platforms such as Zoom and Teams and stuff, um, Facebook Live and things and all that type of thing. Audit it within your team and then see what access you've got to those platforms as well. If you've not got access to um, Zoom, for example, um, and your community wants you to deliver Zoom webinars, you're going to need to get that and you're going to need to investigate potential costs and things as well. So audit that online knowledge and have a plan for what online platforms you're going to adopt and learn how to use them. I think that was a good, really good example that Claire covered in her last um, webinar. The next one is having an online plan if your physical event cannot go ahead. Um, so we mentioned earlier about scoping out what of your physical events could run with an online element. You probably good to have a complete plan of online events and have that ready to go if your physical event can't go ahead. Template things if you need to, but have plans so that you can publish those things quickly. And also, if you're publishing details of a physical event, have your online backup listed on your flyer, listed on your website saying, look, we plan to run this as an online event, but if we can't, we'll run an, on, we'll run a, um, an online element of it. The next point is offering sign up opportunities um, by asking people who join online activities if they'd be interested in signing up for your newsletter or for specific workshops. Um, so this can work very well if you're running online stuff um, during COVID restrictions um, or whenever. Um, you can ask people to sign up for a newsletter and um, sign up for um, advanced knowledge of when you'll be running um, physical events again. That means you'll have a ready list of people waiting to contact, ready to go. So when you do resume full workshops, people will actually attend it. So it's a really good idea to have this backup um, list of people who want to join your activities, um, all there ready, waiting to go. The point I've got just at the bottom here is about communicating consistently. Always make sure that your physical sites, your online channels, and all your notice boards and things have information about your activities during COVID-19. 
Um, so it's where people can find you if your garden site's closed, for example, where people can find you if you're not running your lead cycle ride and have a kind of timetable for when you expect to commence um, your usual activities and things and always have those um, online options available, things people can do, things people can sign up to and wait to hear about later. So yeah, communicate consistently across all your different channels. So some examples of um, communicating successfully on climate change next. Um, we've got some tips here. So number one, this is super important. Make it relevant when you're communicating on climate change. Be aware of what's going on in your local area, but also be aware of what's going on in the world more widely and make your communications relevant to your local area and relevant to those wider things if need be. Also make your communications audience appropriate. What you communicate with one audience may well not be appropriate for another audience. So always tailor your communications, tailor your message and ask. Make your message and ask personal, make it speak to people. Another thing you can do there is share stories um, of personal um, action on climate change. I think for climate here is a really good example of that. Share examples in your community of case studies of people who've done amazing stuff of how it's impacted them, how it's made them feel the things they've um, developed for co-benefits of taking action on climate change. Use appropriate imagery as well. They say images can speak a thousand words. Yes, they can. So use appropriate images to communicate um, what you're doing, make it positive and link with wider campaigns as well. We'll touch on that point a bit later on. The second point, I keep on covering it, be positive. People react well to positive news. Share that good news. And as I touched upon before, highlight the co-benefits of climate action in creating a better world. It's the mental health and physical benefits we get from riding a bike, from walking. It's the same thing from eating great quality local food that's grown around the corner. It's the same thing from having um, a house which is um, comfortable to live in, which you can afford the energy bills on as well, because you've taken because you've been supported to put in um, some insulation or something. And it's the same thing about um, knowing where to get good at um, where, no, sorry, how to access good quality clothing, perhaps, for example, um, from second hand, because second hand does not mean second best. You can get some absolutely amazing clothing that people have donated and through swap shops and things. So it's really sharing that good news. Number three, um, sorry, I've just missed number two off. Number two, be positive is up on screen now, sorry. Number three, promote things people can do. I keep on coming back to this again. Remember your message, remember to your ask, what practical actions do you want people to take? Remember to put your message and your ask in all of your communications on climate change. Otherwise you get to run the risk of people going, Okay, that's nice, but so what? What can I actually do? Give people things they can do and they may do them. Next point is about being inclusive. Um, use the phrases we and our in conversations and highlight that to tackle climate change requires action by absolutely all of us. Um, this is something that um, it takes all of us to tackle climate change. It takes some governments, it takes businesses, it takes communities, it takes young people. It takes individuals, it takes um, all different types of communities to tackle climate change, um, all different types of diversity, so be inclusive. And the final point um, we've got here is about being sensitive. Always have this in mind when you're communicating and particularly when you're talking about COVID-19. Um, I said before, it's been a massively challenging and sad time for um, almost all of us, I think. And so make sure that you're sensitive when you communicate, particularly when you mention COVID-19. So I drew these points up, um, some of them adapted from our previous webinar um, we um, ran on promoting a project. Um, some of these come from successes we've had through um, our communication through the CCF. Some of them come from um, what Climate Challenge Fund projects have done and what's worked really successfully as well. Um, there's also um, some guidance from Climate Outreach. Um, they have a webinar and a guide on communicating climate change during COVID-19 on available by their website via the first hyperlink. And in May of 2021, um, they also published what they called new lessons for building climate change engagement in the UK after lockdown. Um, do check both of those guides out. There's some really, really interesting information on building your approach on communicating climate change, and it's based on research as well. So do check those out. Um, I'm happy to say that um, 
pretty much all of the things we're talking about today are included with are included in much of what we speak about. Um, so yeah, that's good stuff there. Making communications relevant, um, I covered that earlier. Um, I said, be aware of the picture that you've got at a local, national and worldwide level. Um, and these are some things which you might want to think about about when making your communications relevant. Um, yeah, we've got COVID-19, we've got a climate emergency, we've got a green recovery from climate change happening just now, which is tremendously positive. There's a just transition to a more sustainable way of doing things. A really big one here, the UN Climate Change Conference in Glasgow, coming to Glasgow in November, COP26, there will be masses of communications opportunities around that. And again, I do encourage you to attend our webinar by Stop Climate Chaos Scotland, which will be about bringing the conference of parties to your communities. So good opportunity to learn more about that one there. We've also got a growing awareness of climate change amongst the public. And I think that um, might help you make your communications relevant as well. And you might also want to join with various campaigns which are going on through other organisations. You might want to look at newsletters um, and local, national and international media stories as well. Um, you can make your communications relevant through linking with those, through what's going on, through what people are sharing um, kind of through these articles. I'd also like to draw your attention to the Net Zero Nation website, um, www.netzeronation.scot. Um, that's a fantastic resource um, for lots of climate change information from the Scottish Government. Do check that website out. Um, maybe good things to signpost people towards for your project um, and things that you can share outwardly as well. So there's some good stuff going on there. I'm going to bring you back to the Climate Heroes now. This is our Climate Heroes for 2020, 2021. And just to include this as a very short case study, I think it's a good example um, of recognising volunteers at CCF projects for their work tackling climate change during COVID-19, how they've helped their communities navigate COVID-19. Um, the interview session with the heroes at the CCF gathering was one of our highlights of the conference. We keep on getting that and the feedback from people. Um, we'll be delighted to be sharing more stories about these um, heroes soon throughout our communications channels. Um, why do we think this might be a good case study? Well, number one is it's personal stories. It's local areas, so it's relevant. Number two, um, it draws on positivity, tackling climate change and helping communities navigate COVID-19. So it's positive there as well. And we've got a message and we can ask in it. At the end of the brochure, we go through various different ways that people can tackle climate change in their own communities and give various different ways people might want to volunteer, for example, links to the Net Zero Nation website for ScotGov, um, links to um, case studies and things. So yeah, perhaps a good case study to look at there. I'm sorry, the text just coming up for that one just now. So coming to the end now, um, what else could you do? Well, um, you can make things quirky. Um, this is Shetland Islands Citizen Advice Bureau with Erty the Trow. Um, Erty, it's Trow time apparently. And um, they've tapped into local folklore and used a mythical creature called a trow or trow, sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong, please do correct me, named Erty. And Erty's given chat about a host of energy saving tips. He appears all over their promo material for their warmer greener home Shetland project. And you can see here um, various puns on um, Erty um, and running appliances on eco mode. There's a whole series of these. Check them out. They are absolutely great. Um, so use humour, make things quirky when it's appropriate. Again, be sensitive there. So coming to the end now of our um, scheduled kind of content, and we'll be going to our Q&A just now. So a summary, um, some take home messages, perhaps. Number one, whenever you're communicating and whatever for kind of challenges, always have a clear message and ask. You'll need to know your audience and how they communicate to reach them. Um, do ask your audience um, whenever you need to speak with them, because they'll, I'm sure they'll let you know how they communicate and it'll save you a lot of time. Plan and prepare for a blended approach to events. Um, I think that will save you um, a lot of time later on. Um, and having an online backup there um, will help you um, if COVID restrictions do come in and mean you have to cancel your event. Drawing some other points together, be sensitive, be relevant and be positive with your communications. That's the type of thing um, which seems to work extremely well. And a final point, um, which I've not really covered so much today, is look after your participants and my journey with you. 
see communications with your audience as a journey. Um, they may well um, come to you through social media and, and click on and see a various things you're sharing on social, but they may through, well click on the link and go, okay, so I can do various things on the website here. I could go to a course, I could do this, I could do that. I could sign up for a newsletter. Um, it's important that um, you don't lose these people. So give them various different options, different journeys um, that they could go on with you um, and you know, look after them um, as, as they're with you. Finally, contacts. Um, these, are my, these are contact details for our website um, and um, for the um, webinar I mentioned earlier. And there's also my email address just there and Claire's email address just below if you've got any further queries. So just to say thank you for coming along today. Um, thank you so, so much for sharing um, your skills and experience, your challenges, what's worked for you, what hasn't. We're gonna finish up with some chat now um, hopefully share some more of that experience and hopefully pick up some questions um, which we might not have answered through the webinar um, so far. So um, if you could um, hit the stop record button now, Claire, that would be great. Okay.